Reach more potential customers through our sports radio package by dialing 832-213-8824. It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to Football Friday. Should we say Championship Eve for the Southwestern Athletic Conference? Of course, it is our daily mission to bring you news that you could use. You can follow me on Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our website is obnradio.com and the 24-hour dial-in message line, 713-570-6736. And without any further delay, we're going to jump right into today's episode. NFL draft started on last night. Lives are changed forever and we'll continue to watch out to see if any HBCUs players get that extended call. Meanwhile, we have a lot in store for you on today. We're going to hear, of course, from Mr. Rob Butler and the FCS football updates. And we have a special treat to hear from both football coaches leading the charge for the SWAC championship game scheduled for this coming Saturday. Coach Connie O'Maynor and Coach Doc Gamble. Connie O'Maynor enjoying the fruits of his contract extension at Alabama A&M and congratulations to Doc Gamble for being named Coach of the Year. And speaking of coaching, it has been all but made official that Southern will stay in-house with their next appointed head coach and instead of Coach Washington, they will be going with Coach Rollins and we're also going to give our projections of who we think will win this weekend's championship game and why we're going to quickly shoot on over to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline and get today's show on the road and welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline we have on the line with us right now head football coach of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs, Coach Connell Maynard. Coach, how you doing? And welcome back to the show, sir. I'm doing great. Uh, and it's always great to be on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure, your honor. All right. Well, we're honored to have you on board with us. No doubt this is going to be a very critical and probably one of the most uh, highlighted games of your coaching career. You'll be playing for the championship this weekend against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coming from Hampton, what you've inherited at A&M to where you are right now, give us what that journey has been like for you as you're sitting on the eve of playing for a championship. Let's see. Uh, coming from Hampton, you know, uh, we struggled uh, the first season. Then we turned around. We got a winning season. That was the first winning season in uh, six years there. I think we had another winning season, six and five. And then the last season we was. Uh, we had another winning season on the way out. So we we uh, we had winning seasons. We just didn't get to the championship and get to where we wanted to be. We was close. I thought we had uh, thought we had enough talent to uh, get there the last year. And um, for whatever reason, we didn't do it. You know, uh, didn't make the plays. We had to make down the stretch. And I just didn't think everybody quite bought in 100% at, at, at Hampton. We moved on to here at A&M and, Inherited another program that hadn't had to win a season in five or six years and had to win a season the first year. Uh, then, of course, last year we had another winning season. We won six the first year, seven the last year. Now this year uh, we're undefeated and uh, in the championship game. So we got the ship steered around, turned around, heading in the right direction, and where we want to be is in the championship game. Now we just need to finish finish the deal and, and uh, win it on Saturday. Absolutely. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Coach Connell Maynard of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs getting ready for their big matchup against the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, there have been a lot of speculation on how you ended up in Jackson, and I know that both institutions agreed that Jackson would be a good place to meet with the game. But I know for the competitor in you, you wanted that home field advantage, did you not? Of course, of course. You know, you want to play at home if you can. Uh, you know, we we thought that uh, you know we we was in position to to maybe get a home game, uh, but for whatever reasons, um, you know, they changed it up and go back to a neutral site. So um, it is what it is, and we don't mind play, we don't mind playing on the road. We we 
we're undefeated this year on the road. We haven't played a home game all year. And so we're on the road again. And if we can continue doing what we did earlier, we'll, be, we'll remain undefeated on the road. So, uh, you know, I think the team on the road, you know, you get the team is a little bit more focused. Uh, you're together all day Friday. And then Friday night you get your team meal. You have your team meetings. Uh, you have your special teams meetings. And uh, those guys get to get their scouting reports and study those. And um, they don't have to worry about tickets and, and parents and brothers and cousins want to play PlayStation and, and stay up all night. And uh, you don't know what they're doing. So at home you kind of lose track of those guys and they kind of can lose focus. On the road you get to keep them focused. And I think that's – uh, one of the main reasons why uh, uh, that we are where we are because we've been on the road every game and been able to stay focused. Absolutely. And staying focused is definitely a key part. And since you brought that topic up, Coach, there's no doubt that your name had been circulating about an opening that's within the conference. We don't need to go into much detail about that. And I know you recently came out with a statement saying that you're 100% bought into the A&M Bulldog brand. Do you see that as being a potential distraction leading up to this championship game? Not for me or not for my team because, as I stated before, my team knew that I I didn't go interview any university. And uh, my AD knew, my provost and president knew uh, where I was and that I didn't go interview for no university. And I would never do that uh, during a championship run. Um, I said it before, you know, I would give them the courtesy to say, listen, if you want to talk to me, you have to talk to me after the game, after this week. Uh, school will be out and the championship will be over with. And then I can start looking at other places if, if that was the case. But right now, no, I would never do that to my team, my university. Um, uh, you know, and, and I don't think, to be honest with you, any other university would do that. Uh, to a coach that's playing for a championship and, and try to bring them in for an interview and um, and make it public. I, I just don't think a university would do that. I don't think a coach would do that. I know I definitely wouldn't. So, um, again, you know, we, I'm going to concentrate on uh, A&M and this, and this week and winning this championship. And, uh, you know, like I said before, the people that needed to know knew. Why do you think they would say, hey, man, let's throw Connell Maynard's name in there. Just for the sport of it, just to see what kind of knee-jerk reaction you would get? Or could it be uh, from an opposing camp trying to create a distraction as you're leaving for this championship? Uh, Mike, I couldn't answer that question. It could be any of the above, you know. But I don't know. I mean, I'd be speculating if I try to say answer either one of those questions. So I don't know, and I'm not going to worry about it. Once again, we're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Coach Connell Maynard. With all the speculation out of the way, we do know that you have a game that you are preparing for. What is it that Pine Bluff does well that you're going to have to eliminate, sir? Well, I don't know if eliminating, but, you know, we got to slow Tyler down. You know, we know they want to go to football. Uh, he, he got some great receivers, got some great weapons. Uh, he gets rid of the ball on time. You know, he, he, he sees the defense. He knows exactly what he want to do and where he want to go with that ball. And that ball is out under three seconds out just about every time. And uh, then when you do cover those guys up, you got to worry about him pulling it down and beating you with his leg. Uh, he's a dual threat guy, great athlete. And uh, I think he's led their team in rushing twice this year. And so you definitely got to keep an eye on him and uh, try to keep him contained. And so um, we got to try to contain him and, uh, and don't let him go wild in the passing game and the running game. Uh, and then defensively, uh, we we got to take care of the ball offensively. You know, we we got to continue doing what we've been doing, uh, throwing the ball around uh, different receivers so they can't pinpoint one receiver, uh, taking care of the ball, not not fumbling it, and then keep them keep them off balance. And by that, I mean we got to stay balanced, run pass, and, and keep their defense off balance so they can't just pin the ears back or or just play for the pass or just play for the run. We got to be solid because. Uh, they watch all the special teams, man. If you give them something, they'll take it. You know, they'll take an onside kick, fake punt, anything. So we got to be solid in the special teams, make sure that we're sound, uh, or they will try to take advantage of something. Okay. Now, what has the energy level been like for your ball players leading up to this week, Coach? Great great energy. Great energy, man. Championship week, man. You know, 
I don't have to do no rah-rah speeches this week. This is what we've been working for, practicing for, uh, preparing for, and now it's here. So those guys, uh, uh, they come out in the mornings ready to roll, man. Well, Coach, we thank you so much for making yourself available on your critical week of preparation. We don't take your time for granted. I uh, want to give you an opportunity to have some closing thoughts and comments, and I don't have to ask you your projection of who you think is going to win this week, do I? No, no, you don't have to. I can tell you, you who's going to win. The team, the team that scored the most points. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any closing thoughts and comments, Coach? No, just Bulldog Nation, man. We look forward to seeing y'all out there uh, in Jackson supporting these young men that deserve it so much. Uh, we know it's going to be on ESPN, too, uh, but we want to see your face. The band's going to be there. The cheerleaders going to be there. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Come on out and support your Bulldogs. Coach Connell Maynard of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs leading the charge as they'll take on the Golden Lions of University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Thanks again for joining us on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. And, Coach, thank you for your time. You guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side. The Open Mic Broadcast Network would like to take this time to recognize its sponsors and underwriters. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Prairie View Athletic Club, Temple of Refuge Ministries, Reflections Paint and Body Shop, Helping Hands Lawn Service, Diva Skin Conditioner, Purple Drip Daiquiri and Grill. For more information on how you can become an underwriter or a sponsor here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, our number to call is 832-213-8824. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. And welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. I am back on the line with the head football coach of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, Golden Lions head football coach, none other than Doc Gamble. Coach, how are you doing? And welcome back to the show, sir. I'm good, and and, uh, thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Well, the last time you and I got together, it was just before you uh, had the, let's say, opportunity of beating on my beloved Panthers, which has led you to be standing at the catbird seat on the eve of a championship. And in in a short term summary, I guess, is this surreal for you right now, Coach? Um, I wouldn't say it's real. I, I just, you know, this was what we we, we belong. We we thought we were gonna be at. This this the point. To be honest with you, we we said this is where we need to be uh, when this time came around. So, and um, that's testament to our players and our staff. So, um, this is what we all we talked about, and this is what 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 our expectations were. Right, the expectations, especially I guess when you're in the room when it's just you know let's say you and yours, and no one has really bought into the new way of doing things and operating things unless you're within those four walls. It's no surprise to you, but those from the outside looking in appear to be shocked. And you said, uh, guess what? We knew this was coming all along. Yeah, we did. And that, I'm not, that's the honest truth. Uh, and I know every team goes into a new year, new season, uh, with uh, aspirations of, of playing for championships and, and everybody think they, they're going to win one, but it was a realistic conversation for us. You know, we had to point some things out along the way. Uh, to tell them how we were going to get it done. And then and, and there were some subtle changes uh, here within our building, and, and uh, but it was all for the better, you know, and I thought we, you know, uh, we finished up six and five. Okay, so what helps us, you know, you have to do, do a few things. You can't stay the same. I always tell the guys that if you stay the same, then somebody's going to pass you up, you know, so if you're not improving. So, um, and, and, um, so we had to point out some things where we can improve at, and um, we were able to do that, pointed them out, and kids, uh, the guys took uh, – to it and and um we made some adjustments and and um and we're we're, we're where we said we were going to be now when you looking at what you have on paper and you're in the lab trying to fix the necessary parts needed to move to that next level what would you say was the greatest improvement for your program to get you where you are right now you know once we figured out the type, the, the total, once we figured out the total team um, and, and every part of it, you know, the way we went about our day-to-day business, you know, that had to change. Um, you know, that had to improve. Uh, and, you know, not a whole lot because we were doing some really good things, but it was just another way. You always say there's another way to skin a cat. 
Um, so and, and trying some new things. But the thing about it is whatever uh, adjustments we made or tweaks we made, the guys never complained. You know, they never – they were very receptive. And and that's when you, when we knew that, you know, we had, we had a good crew. You know, when they were very receptive, there's a lot of times when you make some changes now because the coach – every coach wanted to do is do things – some things, even though I was here the whole time, but every coach wanted to see some things look different uh, from the, the previous coach and wanted to do it. And a lot of times that could lead to a, a lot of issues. We didn't have those issues. You know, uh, those guys are very receptive, very wide-eyed. It, you know, some new learning here and there, um, but it all worked out for us. Okay, very good. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Coach Doc Gamble of the Golden Lions of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, getting ready for the SWAC championship game that will be taking place from Jackson, Mississippi, against the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. Now, you talk about how when you come in and you get to some slight changes that you would like to see go in the direction that you are now the head coach. And I know it's always tough coming in behind a guy, especially being within the system. How long did it really take you, coach, to adjust and say, you know what, I am running this, and if I want to change something, I can change something. How long did it take for that to really sink in for you? That was the easiest, easy part for me. I, you know, I was a head high school coach for eight years, so uh, and I'm a former quarterback, you know, so I always <laughs> thought uh -oh. I was a leader. You know, uh -oh. so. <laughs> Follow the leader. Oh, here's right, my right, time. Right, Let's right. go, guys. Ain't nothing That's changing. Right. I got That's you. That's right. I got but, uh, you know, but all good leaders are, have been followers before, and I, and I knew how to follow. So, and I played my role uh, in the position I was in prior to this. But, you know, I, it, I, I believe my, my background has helped me uh, uh, in the position I'm in, in today. Yes, sir. Now, you said something very critical, at least to me, Coach. Uh, when leaders – learn from leaders, but at some point a leader has to learn to be a follower, which yeah. makes them a greater leader. Uh -huh. With the 21st century student athlete that we are dealing with today, do you find that sometimes challenging to, to get the guy, hey, I know you're good, you got great intentions, you got great athletic ability, but you don't know everything? And, and that is um, – when you when you're dealing with, I always uh, you got to give examples of everything all the time uh, about what you know how leaders do things, and you're trying to develop your guys and, and being leaders. Uh, but a lot of times, I think the thing about today as it was in in uh, the yesterday years is is uh you know you better have a you better know why, you know you better be able to explain why why we're doing this why are we doing that you know why did you do that and, you know now the thing about it with, the good thing about our group of guys they never ask why. You know, it was just a, hey, you know, you're going to lead us. Okay, we're going to follow you, and, and um, we know you got your, your, you got our best interest in mind. So, um, But uh, a lot of times, it, you know, when I've always dealt with the, the difficulty of getting people uh, to follow, you know, it's always you better know why. You know, and it was the way I was raised, it was don't ask me why. You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're doing why. Yeah, why? Because exactly. I said so. That's because why. I said, that's right. <laughs> Look, I know we're in the same neck of the woods in that age yeah. bracket, Coach. So, yeah. you know, you never question. That went from never. parents. That went from people, uh, adults on the street, and especially coaches, because they were extension yeah. of the family. That's if right. They, if they tell you to do it, you do it, and you yeah. figure it out later. That's so right. I, I definitely understand that. So with, with that mentality, I guess you have to always keep in that back pocket the why just in case it comes up. And then I guess you have to spend more time, I guess, explaining things so guys can get the buy-in a little bit easier. And I guess that's some of what well, heads are bumping with some of these coaches today. Yeah, well, and here's the other thing, too, for me, and, and I know some coaches are different. I, I, I am never I, – I, I won't talk about something I don't know, all right, and, and thoroughly know about. I'm a great listener. You know, and and the other thing about it is, I'm gonna do some research to figure it out what it is I don't know if the question ever comes up. So I uh, I just want I, you know the guys you know I'm around. I, I want them to know that I'm genuine. You know, and I'm not always going to be the smartest guy in the room. But I, you know what? If I don't know, I'm gonna tell you I don't know. But I'm gonna figure it out and find out, um, you know, what it is. Well, coach, to add to that. Being the smartest guy in the room is admitting that you're not the smartest guy in the room because that that's means right. you're willing to learn and yeah. become even better than what you brought to the table. So that's always a good thing. Now, yeah. look, we got a game coming up this weekend, sir, and it's a big game. It's the final game of the spring season, and uh, you have an opponent 
that is coming in with offensive attack, but you don't have an offense that's too shabby yourself. So if you could, if you could give us a breakdown of what do you think are going to be some of the keys for victory for you guys this weekend? we got to play good defense, um, we, and we have been playing def- good defense, so we got to continue to do that. They like to score points in bunches, so we gotta we got to keep that to a minimum. Uh, for us, and then at the end of the day, you know, we got always got to uh, capitalize on turnovers. So uh, if we do those things, uh, we'll be fine. So put some helmets on the ball, create some turnovers, and, yeah. and keep that offense on the sideline. That's it. That's it. That's a, that's a great recipe right there. You say that's a great recipe for uh, ultimate victory for the Golden Lions, at least in the predestined future here. Now, yes. well, we know there's been a big uh, buzz and, and fuss about – the game being played at a neutral site. And um, I, from the reports that were given out, uh, both teams had given a remedy but ultimately decided that a neutral site is okay. When did you realize that it was more than likely going to be a neutral site? Um, the day they, they told me, you know, and I was like, okay, it's, it's for us, it's mentality is anyone, anytime, any place. Put the ball down and we'll go play. That's it. You know, uh, we would love to play it at home and um, be here at, at home, and uh, we've done what we had to do, and, and they've done what they had to do. So, uh, right. you know, it's, it's, you know, put the ball down and let's go play it. Yes, sir, and, and I won't, I'll reserve my other comments for that on another show, but we're going to talk <laughs> the, the game right now. Has it been determined who will be the home team? Uh, they will be the home team, you know, and, and um, it, it didn't just come down to – you know, one way or another, it's just for us is okay. You know, we we're good. We, let's go play. We got a game at the end of the week, and we're looking forward to playing it. So it it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everybody's got to wear a helmet. Everybody has to wear shoulder pads. Everybody has to wear a uniform. So uh, I believe um, the, the locker rooms are the same, and uh, the field is the same. So uh, that doesn't matter to us. Right. No, we were just asking just for I guess the because oh, okay. someone had to be a home team. Yeah. Whether did you all have to flip a coin if it was Pine Bluff? or it was going to be A&M that would be determined the home team for the event. That's all. Okay, no, they're, they're the home team. And, and uh, you know, I, I really I asked about, uh, you know, uh, if we can be in the same locker room that we've been in before, you know. so uh, which Oh, the visitor's some, locker room. Yeah, the visitor's locker room, because we, we went up there in 2019. And, and uh, to be honest with you, you know, we didn't play really well, and it wasn't against uh, – Alabama and M was against Jackson State. You know, and to be honest with you, we stunk up the place that night um, up there. So uh, I say, hey, put us back in the same situation. You know, put us back in the same locker room, same lo- same sideline, and and, uh, uh, and let's go play it. Okay, that sounds good enough. It's going to be a very exciting game this Saturday between the Bulldogs and the Golden Lions, representing who will be the last man standing for the spring football season. Now, Coach, if you could summarize the spring season in one word, what word would you choose? It's been tough. It's tough. Challenging. Challenging. It's been challenging. And um, challenging is the word, but, I, you know, you've got to expand on it. It's been challenging mentally um, because there's a lot of anxiety each week, you know, um, because you have to – with the COVID, uh, you have to test three times a week and – you know, is anxiety, you know, for us coaches, anxiety with the players, you know, will I be able to play this week? Will I be able to coach this week? You know, and uh, some of the other, other schools that uh, went through it, and, and then we got a good dose of it uh, against Texas Southern. You know, by them, we, prep, we were preparing for a game, and then, you know, uh, in their uh, Texas Southern uh, program, you know, they had some COVID cases, so we weren't able to play. So, uh, but those are the things. That, that's it. It's been a challenge. It's been a challenge, but it's been it's been fun. This has been fun since spring as well. Okay, and with all of that, the dust will settle on Saturday. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you have not had to do any extra motivational type speeches for your team. What's the energy level of your team, man? And have you had to tell some of the guys to calm down? We still got a couple uh, days before the game kicks off. No, not at all. It's just our daily present. Our daily preparation has been the same. And uh. You know, to be honest with you, we always say every week is championship week. So uh, we just got to make sure we want to know at the end of the week. Okay. Well, Coach, we want to wish you nothing but success for this coming weekend. And congratulations 
on representing the West for the title game this coming weekend. And we have a custom here that we allow our coaches to have some closing thoughts and comments, and we want to allow you that time now, sir, that you can express whatever is on your mind and heart. Well, one, I want to say thank you, and, and thank you for allowing us uh, on your show. Um, but uh, like always, what, we got, what I tell everybody is, uh, you know, uh, support us, and our team is going to play their best, and, and they're going to play hard as they can uh, uh, each time we go out and have the opportunity to play. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Coach Doc Gamble of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Golden Lions. That is really a mouthful when you think about it, Coach. That's a big, long name, but UAPB, Golden Lions, ready to take on the Alabama A&M Bulldogs this coming Saturday, and it will be on ESPN2. And, of course, for those who prefer radio, there will be a local radio coverage by Mr. Dwayne Lewis. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining us on this segment of the Football Friday. We're going to take us a break, and we'll be back with our projections for this week's matchup. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This is Rob Butler with some STS football news. Junior Isaiah Downs came up with an interception on fourth and goal with 48 seconds left to preserve a 21-15 victory over number 10 Monmouth in the opening round of the STS playoffs at Bauer Stadium on Saturday. The Bearcats, they improved to 7-0. They also improved to 14-0 in home playoff games, and they'll host North Dakota State in the quarterfinals of the SCS playoffs on May 2nd at Bauer Stadium. Running back Ramon Jefferson had touchdown runs of 56 and 3 yards to lead the Sam Houston offense with 98 yards on 9 carries. Wideout Cody Crest accounted for the Bearcats' other score, a 13-yard pass from quarterback Eric Schmidt, who was 12-24 for 133 yards passing. On to this week's game, I look for Sam Houston to win 24-23 to over North Dakota State, and here's why. The Bearcat defense held on at the end and is just good enough to keep the Bison running game from going off like it did in their win over Eastern Washington. The Bison ended up taking over by converting third down try after third down try, but the Sam Houston defense is among the best in the FCS at getting off the field on big downs. Monmouth had a little bit of success, but it didn't run effectively enough to get in the game over the first three quarters. The Sam Houston defense brings a devastating pass rush that lives in the backfield and finished fourth in the nation against the run. Once again, I look for Sam to win this game 24-23 to over North Dakota State. And that's Rob Butler, Open Mic Broadcast Network. And welcome back to the Mike Prince Show here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network on our Football Friday edition championship eve we thank brother rob butler for the fcs football report we also thank coach connie o'mainer and doc gamble for making themselves available for today's episode now it comes time for me to make my projection of this weekend's championship game two highly potent offensive attacks these two teams combined are averaging 75 points That's a lot of scoring, ladies and gentlemen. But someone is not going to score enough points this weekend, which in result will mean they will come up just a tad bit short. And with that being said, we are going to do a breakdown when it comes to how we see this weekend's matchup playing out. You have... Player of the year, first team quarterback in the likes of Glass. You have second team quarterback in likes of Skyler. But I would have to give that inside edge slightly to Alabama A&M as far as offensive potency. Neither one are shabby, but if I had to pick one, I would give that inside edge slightly to the Bulldogs. Defensively, I believe that Pine Bluff has a better defensive unit than that of Alabama A&M. So, so far we have a check in the balance. One for A&M, one for Pine Bluff. 
the ultimate deal seal for me is going to be the special teams unit. And when I go through the checks and balances, compare apples to apples, I would have to give the edge to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Golden Lions special team unit. And with that being said, we are projecting that the last man standing for the SWAC Spring Championship football game will be that of the Golden Lions. That is what we've come up with. We hope that it is a very competitive game, an exciting game, and more importantly, a game where no one walks away with any serious injuries. Let us know what you think. Let us know who you're leaning with. You can always drop us a line on the 24-hour dial-in message line, 713-570-6736, and let us know who you're rolling with. I am going to exit stage left for right now. Thank you guys so much for all of the support and all of the information and inquiries that have been shared amongst this week. It has definitely been one to remember. Don't forget to visit our website at obnradio.com and become a listening partner today to help us to continue carrying on our daily mission. I've got to go right now. My time is far spent. Don't forget to join us on Saturday with the Carlos Brown Show, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And you can come back live with the Mike Prince Live Edition, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. You guys be blessed and we'll see you on the other side.